Okay. 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 Okay.
think so. I mean, I've looked at this already, so. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see this, but. Okay. So this is coming down over here. This is the property that's being split off. This is what's being appended to the lakefront. So this is, this is going to be split off from this? Uh, that's a separate property up there. Okay. Just this 8 acres, roughly, the 10 acres of this. This is roughly 8 acres getting added to the two acres of waterfront. So, uh, yeah, let's see it for sure. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, have you had a chance? I did already see it, yep. No. Any questions? should be addressed to the chair, which is acting chair is me. Please do not address each other directly. Secondly, just identify yourself and your address before you speak. And no side conversations, um, please. And as far as the, um, the text of the notice, we've already posted this a while ago, but the text is a public hearing will be held Monday, October 14th at 7 p.m. at the townhouse, which is actually here at Town Hall. Uh, this hearing is to discuss a proposed lot line adjustment for David Agardero of Cates Lane and Tumbledown Dick Road. Properties in question can be found on tax map 28, lot 3, and tax map 28, lot 18. A map of the proposed adjustment, as well as a more detailed description, will be on display at Brookfield Town Office prior to the hearing. And that's signed by the planning board chair. So there's been uh, one of these, these uh, flats has been on the table over there on display for several days now. So if anybody has any questions, um, it should still be over there unless somebody has removed it. So uh, next on the, the order of business here, um, the board shall review the application. We, we did that. We just approved, um, approved that the materials are intact. We've had David speak. And let's see, board questions, comments. We haven't really had any. And I'd like to open the hearing to comments or questions from the public. Hearing none, uh, we don't need additional information from the applicant. And as such, the hearing is closed. So I guess the next step would be for us to sign the Mylar copy. We can move him to accept the law line. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, I'm sorry, point of order. Um, Rich can't he oppose can't. motion. He's recused. Correct. Thank you. I'll make a motion. We accept the, the um, uh, proposal of the law line adjustment from Mr. Godadero. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we will sign this. As for we need a blue pen, which I have here.
Do I take the mylar after you guys sign it, or do you guys do something with it? I think uh, in the past, uh, well, I think Brian had said it in you know, the past hearings we've had. Brian had said it to the county. Craig, you know uh, also, four of the non mylar need to be signed by all members. The mylar is retained by you, and you're responsible for having it filed at the registry. Mr. Gadadaro should receive a signed copy of the black and white. And the other three go to the town state for the town. Okay. So the town, <coughs> excuse me, the town is responsible to get the mile out there. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. There's one inside right there. There's two for you to sign. We just gotta wait for the group then. Oh, yeah. Well, you better do this. I think it's blue. I just <laughs> check my ammo <hand> there. <laughs> it's hard to tell what's in here. That's blue. That one was blue. You guys got a blue pen down there? Yeah. We're on this side.
For the record, I am 23 and I have almost 10 years of service industry experience in my back pocket. I am looking to offer Brookfield something so much more incredible than just a place to get beer. Let's start with some history. Moose Mountain is best known for its historical ski area dating back to 1961, which is known by my parents and many, many others as a place they first learned to ski. Uh, my older sister remembers it as a place she worked in high school, as a ticket attendant and dishwasher for the restaurant. And I remember it as the first place I tubed and had a few childhood birthday parties at. While those memories were being made, and until now, so is the change of ownership, change of zoning ordinance, change of board members, banquet facility activities, restaurant service, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, consumption of alcohol, indoor and outdoor, disc golf, hiking, antique shows, and I'm sure I missed a few other things. Now, I'm sure most of you know my most recent history with the town involving Moose Mountain, but to recap for the people who might have forgotten or don't know what I have gone through so far, I first reached out regarding our liquor license February 6th. I emailed the planning board, to which I got no reply. I then reached out to the selectmen over the phone, asking if I needed to get a vote done again um, to re reinstate the liquor license at Moose Mountain. I was unaware of the procedure to do such a thing, and so were the few people I spoke to prior at the town hall. His response was, no, if the state's good with it, we are good with it. We proceeded to get all required permits, licensing, and inspections from there to open and operate. The town was sent a letter regarding the liquor license request and had 15 days to dispute it. We wrote letters to every neighbor on Moose Mountain Road to notify them that Moose uh, was having a new public reopening of the lodge. On May 4th, we reopened the restaurant. After that, I attended four public meetings regarding permission from the town via letter to allow us to obtain outside alcohol for the state application under extended area of service. Feeling I was clear with my intentions from the beginning, the town had not asked for or guided me in the way of a site plan. The town then denied me my request at the fourth meeting, the reason being outdoor seating and the restaurant would trigger site plan review. Now we are here because on Tuesday, October 1st, we re received a letter from the town of Brookfield threatening to fine us if we do not cease all operations for the restaurant slash bar food service by November 1st for not finding a site plan. Now, from what I can find publicly regarding that uh, don't need a site plan are proposals that have no change in use or level of activity, which um, it's a permitted use on our zoning. And our service would not um, exceed the 48 previously approved in 2008 and, 2000, and 2010. Internal building modifications to a non-residential use that do not affect the scale or impact of the existing use. It's not taking place. A reuse of the premise for which a site plan review had already been conducted provided that the new use is not different in any type or impact. Food service dates back to 2009 and previously when a snack shack was there for skiing, existing under multiple previous ownerships. All right, definition. Permitted land use, or as of right uses, refer to the allowed land use of the property and structures in accordance with the local zoning district. Permitted land uses do not require special approval or permits by local municipality. Concert. An assembly of 125 or more patrons at any given time for the purpose to provide or enjoy musical performances or another similar event for which tickets are sold or entry fees are charged. A few facts and quotes to bring back to the current board members from the previous boards. In 2008, approval for operation and construction from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services sent to the selectmen including 48C paper service restaurants. January 13th of 2009, Clifton reports that the lodge is open for snowmobilers. There was an ad in last week's paper mentioning open for breakfast Saturday and Sunday. Clifton is going to look into whether all health permits have been obtained. That's from the minutes. April 28th of 2009, the Board of Selectmen, Craig explained that special event permits is not needed for events that are normal course of business. Phase one is complete renovation of the lodge. It was determined that a site plan review had not been triggered and was not required by Mr. Boudreaux and is now focusing on phase two, tubing and snowboarding park. I have, no review, I have reviewed the updates Mr. Boudreaux had done to the property to date, explaining that none of these updates triggered site plan review. Those are all from the minutes of the Board of Selectmen. In 2010, a site sketch plan was signed by all the planning board members. November 23rd of 2010, Board of Selectmen, letter received from the State Liquor Commission for comments on the Moose Mountain Recreation in reference to the recent request for state liquor license. The Selectmen had no comments. January 13, 2014, Brookfield Planning Board. Permitted use does not require a permit conditional, uh, require a permit conditional is requiring a permit. 
that, that's at minute 5845. Nothing to do with an activity, and that makes it a use in itself, by itself. It doesn't have anything along with it being listed under permitted use. Even the full service restaurant, which is a noun, is an activity. It's where people go to dine, the members of the public, GC. 87% of this town voted for this to be a wet town. Who cares if you're wet inside or out, GC. Forget it. Consumption outside the building. That's how it should read. One hour, 34 minutes, and one second. I would just give it to them as a blanket, GC. No expiration date, EC. No expiration date, GC. That's at 134.29. It's a site plan review process unless it's a permitted use. We've already defined all that, GC. January 14, 2014, Board of Selectmen. The state would like a letter from Selectmen granting permission for Moose Mountain Recreation to serve alcohol outside of the lodge. The planning board voted unanimous to allow this. The selectmen decided to send the draft letter drawn up by the planning board giving permission to the town attorney. That's in a minute. February 11th of 2014. Worst comes worse, we just do the year, chair of the board of selectmen. If everything is good for a year, well, we are. November 27th of 2019. A letter was sent to the current property owner, Dana Warren, claiming a zoning violation was happening. December 12th of 2019, Brookfield Planning Board. These are great ideas. It's permitted. I mean, it's right here that you can do that. You don't need to get a conditional use, you know, permit, the chair. So since it's a permitted use anyway, he does not need to file the application, chair, 5951. They do not have to get in touch with the planning board for permitted uses. Rick Surratt, one hour and 10 seconds. Then he just has to download this application someone from the planning board. That's for conditional use only, said the chair. February 17th of 2020, Brookfield Planning Board. The Antique Vintage Display Club could meet, it could be tomorrow. It's permitted use, Rick Surratt. We can entertain that without any problem, Steve C. Yes, Rick Surratt. So, I have my key points, and then, I have the letter that was sent to all of our neighbors about a month or two prior to us opening, informing them that we were going to be reopening the lodge for public access to the restaurant. Because previously it's been used for bathrooms for the disc golfers and outdoor activity people and event space. Um, so I, I have a couple questions for you guys. Um, do we have any files on the Moose Mountain uh, subcommittee that happened roughly around 2010. There was a subcommittee approving and discussing all of the activities for Moose Mountain. Rich, I, need to, I have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> How are the permitted uses and conditional uses chosen on previous zoning before it changed early this year? Those have been, it, the permitted uses have been in there for quite some time, so I, I don't have a history on that, but okay. anybody else, Craig, do you know, historically? There was a charrette, or a series of charrettes, open to the community. I know Frank Frazier was one of the people who led it, it was held in the townhouse. You were probably involved at the time. Rob Collins was probably involved at the time. <clears throat> and they basically brainstormed, I think it was on a Saturday morning, um, what did people in the community think was okay for Moose Mountain Recreation and what wasn't okay. And over a period of time of chewing things up and talking about it, David, you might have been involved in that too. Um, the, uh, they came up with this list. And the, I'm assuming, I haven't looked in the annual reports to see, but I'm assuming that was then presented to the town legislature, the town meeting, as an amendment to um, yeah, it was on the ballot. On the ballot. So many thank changes. you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that information. Yeah. 
Um, and then this would have been for Rich as well. But Rich, do you remember the voting of approval for outdoor alcohol consumption? I do not remember, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, can you show me where in your rules uh, and proce uh, procedure say my permitted uses are to go through planning board for site review? So um, <clears throat> maybe just let's look at the letter that came from our lawyer, mm -hmm. signed by, by Rich. And I believe the, um, the issue comes down to the, uh, <clears throat> the site plan review regulations. And Article 5 is that uh, it's site plan review is required for any change in the use of a site. So I think the issue <clears throat> comes down to whether or not a change from a food service paper restaurant to a full service restaurant. We're still paper service. We're the same exact size as Bob Boudreaux's restaurant. We still have the same appliances in the kitchen. Everything is still the same from when Bob Boudreaux passed it on to Steve and Dana. I thought there, there was an argument to become a full service restaurant. No. We're a full service restaurant. It's just when you have a waitress take your order. But is your current food service activity driven? That's, um, that's the permitted use now. I mean, I would say so because we're open through the day and we have activities inside as well that we have. So it's not just a restaurant. And I think when I brought it to you guys, I tried to make that clear as well. I love the fact of having a restaurant there. I love the fact of having a bar there, but that's not my main point. That's just my starting point. I'd like to bring the recreation side back up to par and where it used to be. So I love the fact that people are out there using the mountain. I'm a huge outdoor enthusiast. I love hiking Moose Mountain. I love hiking Copple Crown, you know? And to be right at, the, at that mountain, whether it's tubing, skiing, sledding, disc golfing, playing pool inside. The kids have, I have hula hoops and jump ropes there and balls and frisbees and stuff out there for them. For them to come and do that and have a day where they can spend a couple hours and also get food and drinks after, I think is a great thing. I think it's for the support of the recreational activities. I would love, you know, more, but I mean, it's all around some form of an activity. Let me, let me jump in. We've, we've got a set of documents that, that we're supposed to file. Mm -hmm. The selectmen are in charge of enforcing the documents. Mm -hmm. The selectmen's interpretation is you're not following the documentation, the process. Hence the letter. Mm -hmm. So th these folks, either you're going to do a site plan review with these folks, or per the letter, you, you shut down November 1st. I mean, it's the selectman's call, and it says right here, any change in use. That's the selectman to make that call. They have to enforce the regulations. That's what they did. Okay. So if, uh, if I need a site uh, review for the restaurant, do I need a site plan review for the entirety of the permitted use list, including dancing or bird watching? What about weddings or astronomy, day camp? All permitted uses, but would you pick and choose which one of those requires site plan? And what part of your handbook would you reference to make that call? It's, it's not the individual activities. It's, it's the um, <clears throat> site plan review checklist. I can give you a copy right here if you want. Okay. Any information? I can grab. I'll get my hands on. <clears throat> and you know, we, want, we obviously we want to work with you. We're trying to be bad people here, but. <clears throat> The rules have been written, and when just looking at the information you provided us, obviously there some people say this and other people say this, and that's how our system works. <clears throat> but we do have these rules that need to be followed, and my understanding is the selectmen have deemed the current situation to be a change of use, hence the letter from the lawyer. So I think at the end of the day, we need a site plan review. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a minor site plan review. Mm -hmm. We don't need plats and boundaries and all. Everybody knows where Moose Mountain is and all that kind of stuff. So the list I just gave you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, just the name of it, like it's got a, has a new name. I don't know how recently that there's a new name to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, just you know, uh, one of these types of things, just a, a drawing, and it can be. Something pretty simple. We just want to know where the building is relative to everything else, what the current setback is, where the potential deck that you want to put might go. We're not putting a deck. Okay. Well, 
you might want to include that. If you get approved, you know, come on it, you'd have to come back and do it again. Right. Um, like, you know, lighting, is there any additional lighting planned? Put, if you're going to put more lights up, ask for it now when you do this site plan review. But basically anything that's checked off here would probably be what we would want to look for. Mm -hmm. And then again, anything else that you think you might ever want, you'd probably submit it within the letter itself. Okay. And I, I don't think there's, and there's not a lot of heavy lifting here. You don't need a surveyor. <coughs> um, so I, I think the best course of action, um, and maybe you can corroborate this, would be to get these materials to us and, and we'll, we'll, we, can, we can certainly have a special meeting, but I think it would be most appropriate to have it at the next planning board meeting. Okay. And if you think there's something on the list that you were asking, that you, that you think you're going to have to do, you can ask for a waiver. Mm -hmm. We heard Dave asked for a waiver for a test pit. Mm -hmm. So it's, that was our best guess at a list. But if you find something that you think is crazy, ask for a waiver. Okay. So I have the start of the application for site plan review. Can I hand that in? I also have the abutters list as well. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to do anything until it's complete. So I, I suggest you hold. So that checklist. Uh, do you submit the application complete? Then they're going to go through and say, "Is everything here?" I don't. Um, I wouldn't recommend you give it to us piecemeal. That's probably a good. That's a good idea. Perfect. Does anybody else on the board have any questions? At this point? Yeah. Can I pick questions? Can we modify her November first deadline until our next meeting? I think the select would have to do that. I mean, we can <coughs> look in right here. They didn't work for that. No. It's just a suggestion because it would make sense. Anybody else? We can, you can make a motion to request the planning board recommends that it be extended. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we extend that due deadline of November 1st until our next meeting, which is going to be. November 11th. Why would you do that? Well, it just gives her 11 days to get it together before the next meeting. I mean, so... There's a whole process that has to be followed. Right. You have to have a public hearing. You have to... I mean, it's not just 11 days. There's no way it's going to be done in 11 days unless she has everything to you guys really quickly. And then you have a public hearing and you have to have notice that. So, you're yeah. not talking... Okay. Yeah, there are... The public hearing notice times are... I think what we could do is, when do you think you'll be ready with a complete application? Because I can have it done tomorrow if it's if it's this easy. If I don't, if, do I need any signatures from anyone else in the town hall? So the question for the board is, when do you want to reconvene to accept the complete application? Do you want to wait a month, or do you want to wait a week, or what? What do you want to do to get the complete application? That would speed that whole process. That up. would eliminate the need to change the due date. Not necessarily, but we do need a public hearing. Yes, sir. And but can that next meeting be a public hearing? <coughs> Notice of the public hearing must be given to the applicant and all about it. not less than 10 days for the date. And Technically, the planning board has up to 60 days after you submit the application. You know, we probably wouldn't do that, but uh, it would have to be noticed, um, posted 10 days before the date of the meeting. So let's say, theoretically, you got it to us tomorrow. The hearing could potentially be the October 28th. October. October. Yeah. October 28th, maybe. Probably October 28th, like Monday, October 28th. So I think you need a meeting to accept it. Right? Just like we do with David, it's complete, we're accepting it. Right. And then once that's done, then you can schedule your hearing. So. Would we be able to do a private meeting or for you guys to accept it? We could do both of those on the same day, right? What? Accept the materials and, and the hearing. The hearing. I don't know how you can do that. You have to, mail, you have to, you have to notify the abutters. I don't think we can. 
Right, it's after the application has met the submission requirements that we hold a public hearing. So, so when do we want to meet again to accept the application? It's got to be 10 days later. We can, we can meet next, next Monday? We can, any, can we post the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So we can <coughs> Monday. We can meet in the week. Andy, can I? Give you this. I don't think you need to do the, I think the notification can happen 10 days before, just like ours did. So you can say you're going to have the hearing on this particular date, which would be your meeting date, as long as they provide the addresses for the letter before that, um, 10 days before that. And then you can do both things in one meeting um, <clears throat> if you, um, if that's the way that it goes. I don't know what the process is to review the site plan and maybe a better motion to recommend back to the board. And I'm not sure what the urgency is to shut down a business in town. Um, I don't know the history because I haven't been following it. But <clears throat> why wouldn't we just give them 60 or 90 days to operate and go through this process? So a recommendation from the planning board should be that we recommend the board of selectmen give them a 60-day window so we can work our way through this process. Because it just seems knocking people out of jobs and shutting down something that a lot of the community likes doesn't make any sense. And we shouldn't be taking a hard line for local businesses unless there's some gross like misconduct there. And from what, everything that I've heard, as a citizen, there isn't. So I just think being prudent and going through a process of letting them figure it out. You know, they're, she's not here with an attorney representing her. She's like trying to make the business work. Your motion is still on the table. Are you got a comment on that too? Correct. What's your motion is still on the table. To extend your deadline. I just said until our next meeting, but it can be. Okay. Rob. Uh, Rob Collins on 260 Stone Road. Um, and I own Frosty Brewery. So um, I think Dave's spot on. I think, I, I only know the stuff third hand, right? So I don't, you know, but my guess is the select boom only pulled the trigger on a letter because they weren't seeing progress. I think, you know, if, if, you're, if you agree to follow the process and are following it, I think I would urge the selectmen to, I don't know, hold back on the cease and desist if, if there's forward progress being made. But because it sucks to have your business shut down, I'm sure. You know, I wouldn't want that. I don't think anyone's going But I think that if there's forward progress, I think that would be great to have an accelerated deadline, get it, get it done. But um, can I make a comment just in general on site plan review? Um, I'm not sure. I didn't understand this until I, I was on the planning board back when Bob Bordeaux went through his ordeal. And um, I didn't, I, you know, I'm a software engineer. I didn't know anything about land use and site plan reviews. Um, what I learned through that process was that it's good for everybody. It lets you guys... Tell everyone firsthand what it is you want to do. It lets your neighbors hear it from you, not from the rumor mill, not from Facebook. Right? They, get, they hear exactly what you want to do from your mouth. They get a chance to say, I like that idea or I don't like that idea. If I don't like the idea, it's, it's oh, I'm worried about traffic late at night. I'm worried about whatever. Whatever they're worried about. The planning board gets to listen to all that, and they're going to put limits on what you can do. Hours of operation, number of people, whatever. And the whole idea of the site plan review is, and rather than having it be written down in stone in a regulation, is that these are all nuanced decisions. And it allows the planning board to apply judgment to allow you to do a lot more than you'd be able to do if we had to write everything down and, and, and protect ourselves from all the bad things that could happen. Um, at the end of the day, you have a document that says you can do this set of things, these set of hours, this way, forever. So I can't come back a year later, five years later, and say, oh no, we, we're getting complaints. You can look, you can say, look, we're allowed to be open until 11. It says right here, if they're complaining because people are coming down the road at 11 15, that's okay. We're, you can't stop us, right? Whereas if you have nothing, then you get a new neighbor who moves in, doesn't like it, they call them selectmen every day, and they're, you know, it's going to be problems, right? So you really want that certainty. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's good for the 
neighbors. They, they know exactly what you're thinking. Because you were able to tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. <clears throat> Steve? I'm trying real hard to keep my mouth shut and let Molly and Bridget do their thing. I really have no desire to run any more businesses. Uh, Dana and I um, bought this property a while ago. And uh, both of us are from out of town and we respect our neighbors and we respect this community and we really want to be part of it. Uh, we are in communication with our neighbors all the time. They visit, they know what we're doing. Molly has gone out of her way to hit every single T and dot every I with both the town, the state, the neighbors, all the regulations. That's stuff I didn't want to do. She's doing it very well, and I'm very proud of her. And Bridget is a good backup for her, and they are a good team. All right? We all have our limitations. All right? We want to be part of this community. Dana is the most charitable guy I know. Right now, he's down south trying to help other communities rebuild. All right. I'm not as generous as him. he is, but he's taught me some lessons. I'm getting extremely upset at the process. Molly has been lectured on rules of procedure time and again. And the town, to be honest, is not following the rules of procedure. Dana, wanted, Dana came up here and wanted to start a church. Okay? A church. And he was shut down immediately. And we discussed that, and <laughs> that was ridiculous. It's ridiculous because now, Dana wanted to not cause a stir. All right? But a church, a church has certain protections doesn't matter what your zoning is. doesn't matter what the neighbors say. You can run a church anywhere you want. The town violated the rules of procedure with just that church by trying to shut it down. That's against federal law. I have seen the boards ignore the rules of procedure all the way through this. And I'm trying to keep quiet and let Molly and Bridget do their thing. And it irks me <laughs> that, the, that, that the boards can get away with this. I want to be part of this community. I don't want to buck the system. I don't want to be one of the good old boys. I don't want to sit on the board. I just want to be part of this community. And I want them to have an opportunity to, to thrive. In the restaurant business, it's hell. It really sucks. And they've got their hands full. And this is what they're devoting all their time to, is trying to get through the board. They're following the rules. The board's not following the rules. And then we get a threatening letter from Mr. Zachary. Now, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I've left the door wide open for Mr. Zachary to try and handle this one-on-one, -on -one so we're both on the same page, and that's been ignored. All right? There's a lot going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of information missing. I can't make heads and tails of it, but it's getting a little ridiculous. All right? I've got $100,000 worth of damages on things that the town has shot down against the rules of procedure. I've been forced <coughs> to give a lawyer, a retainer, to watch what the boards are doing. I don't like my lawyer because he's nasty. I would like the option to try and work this out amicably as a community. If we don't have that option and we're forced to deal with a cease and desist, and that on the other hand is not something that was legal, that is a ceased order, it wasn't done properly, I'm not even sure, I can't even find out if the Board of Selectmen voted on that letter. My understanding was the board has to do it as a board. Okay, but either way, it wasn't done properly. I'm throwing it out there. This, this is the last meeting I'm going to come to without an attorney. It's not a threat. It's a necessity. But 
we, are, we, we wasted a year on this. Their focus should be on running the business, not dealing with the boards that have got a clue what's going on and have no idea about following the rules of procedure. All right? I'd love this to be closed session, but it's got to be embarrassing for the whole town. All right? This is the last meeting. I would like some kind of resolve here tonight so these guys can go forward and run the business. I don't want to be that guy, all right? But next meeting, I'm going to have to be that guy. Thank you. Uh, I can understand your frustration. I think the issue here is the site plan review. It's that simple. This, we've been going through this four, five, six months. And they've come here several times. And every time that they've come before the planning board, we've mentioned that the importance of the site plan review. That's all that's required at this point. I'm against the site plan review, okay, for what they're asking for. They say there's a change of use. There's no change of use. Okay, if we're going to do a site plan review, we're going to hit everything so we don't wind up here again. That's going to be costly. It's going to take us months. All right. They came in here asking for outdoor seating. Wanted to get some information. That was supposed to be, per the rules of procedure, a non-obligatory meeting where they can find some information out. Okay? We decided not to do it. It should be off the table. The board backs up and decides that now we need a site plan review for an existing restaurant that is an allowed use. If, if the town decided to make a full service restaurant a conditional use, yes. We're going to go for site plan review. We've got to go through the whole gamut, yes. But it is not a conditional use. An argument can be made that back in 1962, there was a restaurant. It was before zoning. Okay, we haven't even hit it on that one. All right, you said yourself, the land follows the, or the land use follows the owners. They don't give it up, and if they gave it up, there would have to be a letter of uh, abandonment by the town to the owner of that property. That's part of the rules of procedure. None of them are being followed. I really want to work with you guys. Molly wants to work with you more than I do. All right, so she's going through this. Let's get something done as a community. So we, I don't have to spend the next four years fighting with a town that I've grown to love. I want to avoid that. But I'm getting down to the wire. Everything that we've asked you guys to do, we should have been able to do. We, we did the applications. We should have been able to do it. We had to turn people away. And now, including the church, we're up to $100,000 worth of damages. I'm willing to let that go if we can get something done that's reasonable. All right? Go to the town. If the town doesn't want that restaurant there, the town has the option to change things. Our neighbors have the option to change things. All right? There's one neighbor that's been complaining since the day I got in. I still respect him. I will accept his two cents and I will work around him like I will with everybody else on the street to become part of the, the, this community. I'm reasonable, but I'm getting to the point where it's just, this is beyond me. So I don't want any more lectures about rules of procedure unless the boards are willing to follow it. I'm, we're willing to follow the regulations, but the regulations say we don't need a damn site plan for what we're asking for. The town can change that, make the restaurant a conditional use. So, Gus, <clears throat> to your point, we brought up site plan review almost every time Molly's been here. Any other board members have any thoughts on that? No. And the, my understanding is uh, the, our legal counsel, town legal counsel, believes that we need a site plan review. Yes. Her, her basis for wanting a site plan review 
is the fact that Bob gave in to the board and did a site plan review for two operations. In that, there were conditions. Okay, that site plan review should not have been done in the first place. There was one condition in there. Any, any uses going forward need a site plan review. Well, it's kind of vague. This right? the 2010? What's that? 2010 site plan review? I believe so, yes. She's basing her whole argument on that one statement. I think it's paragraph four or six. That's what she's basing the whole, par the whole fight on here. I don't think she's got half of the information, <laughs> honestly, all right? I'm sure she's a very good lawyer, but I think she's lacking the information from the boards to make a, a sound decision. Does she even know what the allowed uses are? And then it states right in there, the site plan review is not needed. For instance, your residential zoning, it says right in there, planning board step back if somebody wants to build a house. No say, no permit whatsoever. If they want to make some changes after they build the house, then yes, it's the same thing. It's an allowed use. Houses are an allowed use in a residential area. No site plan review is, is needed. We're in the same boat here. So why is it changing for us? Didn't change for everybody before us, but now that they're here, it's changing. I don't get it. No. Uh, so I'm not a lawyer, but uh, this, the language to me reads pretty plainly in the site plan review that a change in use triggers it. And you're right, it also says anything related to a residential use doesn't trigger it. And so uh, to me, the way I read it, just as a sort of normal person, site plan review is probably required if you're changing a use. A uh, second thought, um, I. I I, I don't know whether, like, a, a permitted use that's gone through site plan review and been approved, if that is discontinued for a period of time, I don't know whether that's grandfathered or not. I do know that for non-conforming uses, like gravel pits in town, if they stop using, doing it for a year, they lose that the right to do that. So I, I would just ask the question, put the, the question in your mind of whether or not such a thing exists for, for in this situation as well. Um, but in any case, I still think you want to do a site plan review for what you want to do, not what Bob wants to do. Um, another thought related to this, I think that the, the exemption for site plan review for all things related to residential is probably a bad idea. Um, not around building houses and stuff like that. I happen to have a home business, a brewery, and the town has basically no say over how I run my business. And I'm, I'm working really hard to be a good neighbor, just like these guys are, right? So, but, we, and, and as a home-based business, I have to live there, right? So I have to, it has to be my neighbor. So it's different in the rec zone. We don't have to have any tie to the town, but um, so different beasts. But um, I, I, I'm sure that if I had loud band playing every weekend until midnight in my, out of my beer garden, you'd be getting a lot of phone calls. Right now, I'm totally allowed to do that. So, I, I, just as a future zoning change thing, you might wanna, or I guess it's the site plan review regulations, you might wanna think about that one. Um, I, I know there's, there's a newer process that selectmen have for uh, home-based business approvals. I'm not sure that's going to address all, all the concerns that might be. Um, final thought. Um, the requirement for site plan review is buried. You need, you need to go look at the site plan regulations to find it. It's, I, agree. I, I think it would, be a, it would be a simple change to put on the, on the uh, uh, ballot just to put a sentence or two in the rec zone or anywhere, Could, I guess it applies to everywhere, but somewhere in the zoning, so that it's hard to miss, that there is a, such a thing as I plan. Thank you. Um, Rich, maybe this is, is for you, and 
I'm a little confused as well on the permitted uses and the site plan review requests. So any of these permitted uses would require a site plan review? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know that. But it, it seems like this is one that's on here, and it's requiring a site plan review. Change in use. Any change in use. Okay, so if that's that's the way I read it is. Okay. Let me just continue. You understand a bit of night. So mountain biking is on there. So if they wanted to turn Moose Mountain into Highland, which if you guys know is over by Tilton, and it's got 400 teenagers here mountain biking every weekend, would they require a site plan review? I'm not, I would think I'm, so. I'm not a lawyer, but I think so. I would think so, right? I think so, because they need to worry about all the other things. Parking, traffic, and lighting, parking, traffic. Exactly. So those are, that's why. So I think that's so why. So it changes the Does that make sense why yeah. this is triggered from that? I guess that's where I'm going. Because there's a lot of things on here, snowmobile rentals, and like there's a lot of things on there that I would think you would, I think even as a, somebody right. that lives in the town, you would want a site plan review. I think you already said, though, it's going to be a minor site plan review, yes. which is not like a full site plan yeah. review. So it's not it's not a big deal to do it. And if you're not requiring you know, drawings and all that other stuff, then I think that it wouldn't be that hard for you to put it together um, mm -hmm. to give them something. I just think that like the, the prudent thing to do is just have enough time so that nothing's getting shut down. And I think that goes back to coming up with a motion to ask for 60 or 90 days of recommendation to the selectmen to postpone it until they review the site plan. And then you guys put your stuff together. They'll give you a couple of misses in case you get here and something doesn't work or they don't accept it. And you can try again the next month. Um, and then you can just keep operating during this process. But don't think of site plan review like it's going to be some major, it shouldn't be some major thing. Well, that's my theory, it's like, or my thought. like. Aside from the cost of it, I don't understand what's the the risk. Like, what's the oh, site plan review? Like, I don't, I don't, I just don't know. Like, why is it scary? It scares Other than the it, cost, it, it scares every. Like, I had to do it in Wakefield. Right. It was a nightmare. Like, it was probably just a, because it was it's probably a twenty thousand dollar site plan review. But at least it gives you, like you were saying, like the documentation to kind of get all your ducks in a row. Right. You know what like I mean? So, it's like, as a business, this is now our name, our legal business yeah. entity, like. And this is our plan. We're not like, you know, taking from other people type thing. I just don't understand why it's scary, but I just, I guess I don't just depend, know enough. It just because it's a pain. It's a pain. Are. But right, if, right. if they're it's stating it's a minor site plan review, mm -hmm. then there's not really that many requirements. And essentially, they're just looking for whatever that basic list of events are. And I think his advice about trying to anticipate what your business is going to be like in three years or five years. And incorporating that into your site plan now, so you don't have to come back and want to do right. that it would be a prudent thing to do. But I just think that like it should it, it shouldn't be this complicated, and it shouldn't require additional attorneys. It right. Just be, I, I don't think there's an attorney cost or surveyor cost or whatever. It's Molly's time, unfortunately. Does she have a copy of this appendix E? Because that might be helpful for her in putting together and drafting yeah, a site plan. Yeah, the permitted uses, Molly. Permitted uses are online. You have that list, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I have right here. Do I understand correctly that every single permitted use has to go for site plan? For instance, I haven't seen anybody looking at the birds lately. If we allow the bird watchers up there, do we have to go to site plan? Because that's what you're saying. It sounds ridiculous, and I believe it is. I'm not saying that, but I'm... That's what the zoning like that's says. Harassing. I'm sorry? That's what the zoning says. Right. It's not... What? Okay, so in, but in your application, you could put bird watching. You could put bike ride. I, 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 th I think that people are allowed to go there anyway and watch birds, right? That's not some. But I think that if, if you are <laughs> running a business around bird watching, that's when that triggers. So it's an actual part of your use of it is the bird watching. If pe people are allowed to go any, anywhere, it's not posted, right? And watch the birds hunt whatever they want to do, right? So I think just because somebody's watching birds doesn't trigger site plan review. If you're building a business around that, you're you're if you're charging for them to or, see the birds or something, or, or, it's just you're it's driving, traffic, traffic, driving traffic, driving right, traffic right. through bird watching. Yeah. You're, you <laughs> supply you, you a lot of borrowed binoculars. You, you have bird guides. You have you know the Merlin app where they identify the from the songs or whatever. Right? You start to build your, that as part of your business. Then it, it might it would you'd include it in a site plan review, and I think that 
given, given how much you could do with the rec zone, I think you should get used to the idea that you're going to do a site plan review every one, two, three years as you get a new idea and want to try something new. You know, in the next week, get, get an application for what you want to do now, what you're doing this summer, right? Mm -hmm. And plan the next year, okay, well, what do we want to do three years out, right? And then maybe it's another site plan next fall or something like that. Okay. Great. A perfect example is when Mr. Bordeaux, obviously in 2010, as much as he resented doing it, he did the site plan review. It was not a big deal, although he sat here in earlier meetings saying, I shouldn't have to do it. You're trying to put me out of business. This is going to cost me thousands of dollars. He did it. And the planning board cooperated with him, and it took seven, eight months, but it went through. Everything got signed off. He obviously wasn't thinking about disc golf in 2010. So in 2012, he did the site plan review for disc golf. We've got it in there. Molly looked at it. Very simple. And that was it's the, following the regulations of the town. And that was a minor site plan review, so it was... I, I don't know the 2012 whether it was minor or not. I know in the first one they waived a whole bunch of stuff, particularly the surveying, because there were already surveys done. It's just following the regulations of the town, so everybody knows what's going on. So given that, that disc golf precedence, it seems like there should be a sample review for this, so I think that corroborates what we've been trying to do as a planning board and ask for that. Um, back to your motion, I think in the spirit of cooperation, I think we should do I think we should extend it. It's okay. 60 days is the amount that, that's of time that we have. Oh, uh, and then you redo your motion to extend it 60 days, that would make it January 1st. And that would give us plenty of time to have it. Right. We're close to the finish line here. I, I think it's not as difficult as it may feel like it is. Mm -hmm. My, my comments are, we've been here three times this year where we were going to submit a site plan review, and we never pulled the trigger. So I would suggest that we meet next Monday as a board, accept the documentation, and then if it's appropriate, entertain a motion to send a public hearing and give them some relief. But we've been oh, here three, three times. Yeah, right. It's been going on for a while. So you say. The extension should be once we receive the application. Yes, yeah, good idea. We meet next week, if we Monday night. Yeah. Only purpose is to receive the application, make sure it's complete. Now we've got some, some, some documentation, and then we, we go for some relief. 21st. And we do the 21st. It's a short meeting, just to, yeah. to officially accept the application. What time? Next Monday? Does that sound right? Yeah. What time would that be? 7 o'clock or? Yeah, 7 o'clock. Well, it may not be super short. Right? You need to go through each of the items, make sure that you're satisfied. Yeah. With the, e either that they've submitted what they're su they're submitting is sufficient, or that the waiver is something you're willing to waive. Right. So you're going to need to go through each of the items on the checklist. Yeah. So I mean, it's not going to be three hour meeting, but it's not going to be three minutes. I have one more question. What exactly is the change of use? Use, we believe it's a full service restaurant. And it's never been a full service restaurant before. That's our opinion. Yes. And your definition of full service restaurant? Well, there's a, there's a state well, definition. Well, my definition is the one in the RSA. You don't want that one. Yeah, you don't want that you one. You want that one. So, so are we going to have a meeting next Monday? It sounds like we may not be having a meeting. We're going to have a meeting? No, I'll be there. I'll be here tomorrow night as well. For the second meeting. Okay. All right. Also, uh, we have planning board hours Thursday morning, 8 to 10. And Would you guys rather do that? Uh, it's not a meeting. Oh, okay. It's just uh, informational. And, and Rick Sorrent will be at that on Thursday if you'd like to, if you have any more questions, you know, in terms of going through this. And they can review the application that you have on Thursday and make sure it that's good for Monday. Yeah, I'll do that. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So we don't need the motion. You want to take that on the table? Yeah, I'll take it up. We'll take it up. <clears throat>
may have to put it back on the table. Yeah, well, it's right. Yeah. Um, I know that you guys claim that it is like a Christian thing to do that's all right, that's your final decision and opinion, that's totally fine. Um, but there's hiring ads for the restaurant in 2014, 2015, and 2016. My sister also did work there, and I was there for multiple occasions <coughs> in the time that it was a full service restaurant. Um, just to clarify, just so you guys do know, I have pictures, I have videos, I have menus, and all of that. But just so you guys know, that's where we were thinking it wasn't a change of use and it wouldn't issue a site plan. And with the research I had done previously, that's why, hence, I was scared. But it was just the fact that, you know, I was getting mixed reports from my history that I had read into and all the research I had done, and then at the board. And then also there is some, some stuff that I would feel is biased from the town, considering there are a few townsmen on our road. So that's why it was just seeming like we could have been, you know, a little sidetracked for the purpose of that. So I just want to clarify that. I have no ill intent, and I'm not trying to fuck the system, as Steve would say, but that's just where I'm coming from and where my opinion started. So thank you guys for your time. I'm sorry to bug you guys all the time <laughs> with my long speeches. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I agree it's confusing, and there's better history. If you just look at this history now, maybe you've cherry-picked a lot of these quotes, but... Some of them, they're know, all in the, in the contradict minutes. other ones that have happened the year before and new people come on board. And, you know, we're all yeah. volunteers, so we're not trying to screw anybody here. Yeah. But, Rob, you've been on the board before. Right? Oh, yeah. I, guess I, I, mean, we're, 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 I mean, being on the board is hard because this stuff is complicated. Yeah. And none of us are doing it professionally, right? So, uh, but the, I, at, the, at the brewery, I talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Everyone is interested in what you're doing, mm -hmm. and everyone's excited this could be something there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people might be afraid of, like, traffic noise or music at night or whatever. The site plan review is going to let all that stuff be aired, and you'll get a determination of what you can do. And these guys, I, I've met them all, I know a couple of them pretty well, uh, they're reasonable, mm -hmm. right? They're just, their hands are tied by the regulations. And if, if they don't follow them, then the town is going to get sued. You don't want the town to get sued because you're going to be thrown into limbo. Right. It's just like Bob was right. back in the day, right? I think just go through the process. What you're trying to do isn't wacky, right? <laughs> it's not crazy. Yeah. It, it's, people will understand it. It's going to fly through. <laughs> just fill out, the, fill out the checklist, provide the information, go through the public, you know, be ready to talk to your neighbors, and everyone is interested about what you want to do, and answer their questions. And the board's going to have to figure out hours of operation and whatever other things might come out of that. Right, and that's it. So that's also another question for me. We already have hours of operation that was approved through the planning board and the selectmen. It would be 6 a.m. to 12 at night, 12 p.m. This is just going to give you like. So your is that going to? Are those going to be redefined as well? Previous things that have been submitted and approved. Or is well, this what was uh, under what process was something approved? Um, I think it was events. the site plan. It was the site plan review in 2010 for special events. It's in, it's in the information that went to the attorney. Yeah. So it's in the site plan review. Yeah. Um, I can pull it out of the property record if you want to see it. So, so those hours would only apply to special events. I'm pretty sure it was for special events, not for regular business, but I, I could be wrong. I think it was for regular business, because yeah. then it said employees could be before and after, and with the special events, that would have been the big park as well, so I would assume it coordinates with both, if okay. not all activities there. But just clarify. Well, that could change with the public hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Why would that change? Well, I mean, you're going to get input from commuters and neighbors, and it may... May affect but if that, was already, just, if that just, was already proved, I'm just speculating. that would also be changed? Like something that was already done in a site plan could be changed. Like say the disc golf. Say I mentioned disc golf in this site plan, right? And then people are like, oh no, we don't want disc golf. Am I out of disc golf now? And do I have to go rip off all my no, old baskets? You, you, you know, you've got disc golf. Right. 
So but, my hours of operation wouldn't change because I was already approved. If that's, if that's not just for the special events, okay. I would think so. I mean, just uh, think about it. I mean, you, it may be reasonable for you to, I don't know, have outdoor music on a Saturday afternoon. Very reasonable. Having that, that till midnight, you know, on yeah. a Monday night, that's, yeah, that's probably not reasonable, right? So even if, even if you can be open to, till midnight, you, there may be some things you, that right. you're not allowed to do at, until midnight. Right, so so that's where the site plan review will be able to flesh out those those details. But you shouldn't. Be, I think you shouldn't be afraid that yeah. something you've got approved is going to suddenly be yanked out from under you. Okay. Right, and I, I some of your quotes you had were, and I've heard them before, where people are like, oh, we'll approve it for one year, and then we'll see. I mean, that's unreasonable to for a business to somebody build a business. Mm -hmm. And a year later, they, they could just get yanked up from under. That's, well, that was, that's if, not reasonable, right? If something so, was to happen, like if something was to happen, then it would be pulled. No, I, I, I think, I mean, I don't know what the thing that would happen would be if, like, I mean, I if, you get, like, if you get something approved, I think you can rest assured that you can do it. It's up to the, the board to think things through enough and put enough restrictions that they feel comfortable. They may decide that they want to restrict it this big this first year, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then maybe next year when you come back and say, hey, can we do it a little bit bigger? Then they're like, oh, things went well this year, let's go a little bit bigger. Because the risk is if they go, if you ask for giant and they yeah. give you giant, then you can't pull it back. Right. Legally, they can't pull it back. Okay. I also explained to Molly when we were doing the revision of min or reviewing of minutes and stuff, that there's a difference between a board member saying something as their opinion mm -hmm. and an approval by the board, by vote, yeah. by motion Absolutely. for a specific thing. Mm -hmm. And some of your quotes were from the chair, who was a very outspoken person, and people with a lot of opinions were flying around before Mr. Bordeaux had to. Um, uh, agreed to do a site plan review, the minutes, and particularly the auditory recording of the meeting that was submitted by the planning board legal counsel to the superior court in Ossipi, it was all uh, personal opinions, and it made for a big problem for Mr. Bordeaux because of the, he was making his decisions based on people's personal opinions. Oh, he shouldn't have to do a site plan review. That's different, and that, unfortunately that got recorded in minutes. It's one of the reasons why in minutes you don't do verbatims. You know, Rob Collins said this, and Clifton Camp said this, and Gary Ciccaroni said this, because it can be misinterpreted as, oh, well, this is the way the board feels. The way the board feels is reflected in a vote. A motion and a vote, plain and simple. And that's how the site plan reviews for Mr. Bordeaux were accomplished, and the town worked with them. Okay, I'd like to wrap this part of the discussion up. Any other comments? We'll see you. Uh, Monday morning, maybe, and then Monday year yeah. yep. for the planning board. Just one final thought. Um, sure. We should all keep in mind that if the zoning and the other regulations aren't working for us, change. we can change them. Yep. If if there's a general sense that this site plan cha site change in use triggering site plan review is a bad idea, it's straightforward to change that regulation. Uh, so yep. uh, that would be another avenue if you can convince them to change the regulation. That would be another avenue. I think I think site plan review is a good thing. I think you should just do it. It's going to be good for everybody. But that's another avenue. If you don't like the zoning, you don't like the regulations. Zoning has to be changed on, on a ballot. I think the site plan review regulations requires public hearing, but they can do it. I think. That's correct. So it's a much smaller process to change that. So. Okay. Um, next item: approval of minutes from August twelfth. Anybody have any questions or edits? Um, Terry? Yes? Terry and I were not.
not here that day. Yeah, I think, um, I guess I make a motion. I was going to say I could make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to pass it. I think I'll take they're in the book, so uh, it was a very short meeting, 10 minutes or so, but I think we covered. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And more discussions, new business? I don't think we have anything for the warrants right now. Um, that could change, but we have a you know a deadline in a couple of months here. If I we do, a question. do want to change it. Have you been working on anything in the last few months? Me? Did I miss? No. No. Nope. We've had some minor discussions around the, um, the five acres owning that is it's not a hundred percent clear that. You know, a four acre lot is grandfathered. I don't know if that warrants being on a warrant. The building inspector is, is good with just saying that what was there at the time is fine. Um, so if you have a four acre lot, you can get a permit, assuming the setbacks and everything else are okay. So I don't think we need a warrant article for that, but I just went to I, 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 I the, the, the zoning's clear. And like we had with, before this change, we had a whole bunch of non-conforming lots that were under two acres that had to go, that were governed under them being non-conforming. So I think that that Warren article created a whole bunch more non-conforming lots that have to go through, that have to have that process applied to them. I think it's, I think it's terrible that it was done that way, but we've got we to gotta follow the rules. I mean, the, the building inspector has no right to give somebody a building permit on a four-acre lot now. It says if it meets the current setbacks. There's a restrict, there, there was qualifications yeah. on that. Not more or less have to meet the current, the current setbacks. Current zoning with respect to setbacks. I think that, Yes. Yes. But otherwise they get relief through the ZBA. Yes. But I guess my point is if it's a two-acre lot and you can make all the setbacks, I think the code enforcement officer is going to issue a building permit because you meet the current setbacks. Yeah, that's not the way I read that. So you can't create one. You can't create a new lot less than five acres. I, okay. Well, I like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but I we dealt with a bunch of non-conforming lot stuff when I was on the planning board, and even if they could meet the setbacks, they were still. I, if I understand correctly, they were still going through the process. Maybe you're wrong, but anyway, a, I think you should, we should have clarification on that. Okay, that was the, that's the feedback. So, I, I, you and, you and maybe, maybe it's worth having a lawyer. Wait I didn't think pre-existing lots were affected by it. Only new subdivisions. Yes. That, that, that was the intent. Yes. But that's not clear. And well, that's not what was written. You, he could have done it through a subdivision regulation that said you can't create a lot smaller than five acres and left two acre minimum lot size. That but that's not what you did. Yeah. Correct. Right, you could have, I mean, and I think that would have been a lot cleaner. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's, I can't think of everything. That's true. Not every, or everybody's interpretation. So, so I heard two things, I'm going to move on them. <clears throat> and that is the slight later review for activity in the in the residential zone. We don't require it. And the example, we heard an example yeah. of, of, I can open a business, and we don't require a slight later review what you're going to do. So we want to consider that. The other issue that the selectmen are dealing with in our zone <clears throat> Maybe we shouldn't care. We get complaints about this, the state of properties. It's a mess. Just junk all over the place. It's run down. It's killing my property value. There's nothing we can do about it. So I don't know if we want to address that. Rich, 
I haven't looked at your home business. I have not looked at your home business process that Selectman have. Is that something where you would have enough visibility to control? To I don't know. We issue a permit to, to, to run a home-based business, and the process we go through is people come to the select meeting, select meeting, describe what they're going to do, what the impact's going to be on the neighborhood. We document that, and then we say yes or no. Can you put conditions on it? Yeah. Okay. So it's like a mini, tiny, tiny, mini site plan review. Yeah. So maybe that addresses it. Maybe. Home-based business is, is a special application. We've had one so far, and you don't know what's there, so there was no issue. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I mean, you know, people know the breweries there. Yes. I mean, hopefully they think it's a good thing, but, you know, it's, you know, when there's 30 people on the lawn on a nice afternoon, it's, you know, looks like somebody's having a party, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was before we had the... Yeah, yeah, I... I, I I missed out on that phone. Yeah, I'm having to go through that one more process. How is it documented? I'm sorry. How is it documented? We fill up. We, we get the form. We make notes on it. We put a copy in the in our file, the property file. Property file. And okay. give a copy back to the applicant for their records. So I have. Okay. Any other? More discussions? We're going to have a meeting. We're going to, we made a motion or we're going to have a meeting next Monday at 7 o'clock. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, old business rules and procedures review. Um, I think it's pretty clear we need. Can we bump that until next time? We can bump that. We don't need to talk about it. But I think it's clear that we need some. Oh, yeah. Some cross fertilization here. I and mean, some of the stuff online is different than what's in our notebooks. And Marshall, any any luck with uh, what is it? S C B whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's Stratford planning. So I talked to the director. I went to a meeting on Friday. So they're gonna they're thinking the best way to do it to not charge money up front is to do some kind of an overview audit. Mm -hmm. of what we have. So, I think I just need to close the door. By okay. next month, I should be able to so I think have, that, a, have a meeting and that here, be, actually, with them. Right? We would be talking about master plan, and rules zoning. and procedures? Yes. And the zoning issue, we could certainly, I don't know, if the zoning board has to do that, or I would assume so. Or we can do some of it. Or well, we create the zoning. Right. 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 And so, enforce the rules. Right. So we can attack both of those. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Any other member comments? Uh, meeting adjourned. 822. David, for that is That's us. We said that. Mr. Mead. I'll take that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Can I trust you with that? Can I trust you with that? I'll take it. Very good. I'm not calling. Thanks, Nick. I'm talking to Chris. So it's true. You can just say it. Thank you, Chris. I didn't feel like I was bothering you. I didn't know you were so helpful. I want to flat five. Can I trust you with that? 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 Can I trust you with